Now that we've selected what tracks we'd like to overwrite to, in other words, where on the vertical axis our clip will go, we have to choose where in time it will go on the horizontal axis. We've actually been doing this all along, but now is the time to define what we've been doing as three-point editing. All source record edits have four points which define every edit. Source in and out points to define the beginning, end, and duration of the source clip, and record in and out points that define where the clip will start and end in the sequence. Up to now, we have only been explicitly marking our source clips, letting the timeline position indicator serve as the endpoint for our edits. Because the Avid is, after all, a computer, it calculates the fourth edit point in the timeline for us, so we only have to select three out of four points, hence three-point editing. Let's perform a different kind of three-point edit than we have so far, by marking two points in the timeline and only one in the source. In the timeline, drag the position indicator toward the third clip in the sequence, scene one, take two. To precisely position on the endpoint, hold down the command key as you drag the position indicator. Instead of moving smoothly across the timeline, the position indicator jumps from edit point to edit point. This is called snapping. It's one of the most useful techniques you will ever use. Continue command dragging until you snap to the endpoint or head of clip 1 underscore 2. Press I to mark the endpoint. Now, hold down both the command and option keys and click the out point of 1 underscore 2. This snaps the position indicator to the out point or tail of the clip. Mark the out by pressing O. Notice the highlighting between the in and the out points on the selected V2 track. This defines precisely where the edited clip will start and end. Now, we only need to choose one edit point in the source monitor to perform the edit. Play the clip and look for a good range that shows the desperate driver chasing after his car. I'll play in slow motion by holding down K and L at the same time. As the note from the director specifically mentioned wanting to see the driver, we can rule out any segment where the driver is blocked by a tree or person. While playing, press I on the keyboard just after one of the foreground characters moves off screen right. Marking while playing is known as marking on the fly. Okay, we're done. The duration of the sequence will define the duration in the source monitor, so we can just perform an overwrite by clicking the red overwrite button or by using the keyboard shortcut B. Review the edit in the timeline by moving the position indicator before the edit and playing forward past the clip. Wait a minute. Please, please. No matter what point you choose, the ending frame of the new clip in the timeline is always a mystery. In my case, there's no body in the frame at the head of the clip, but by the time we reach the tail of the clip, the body is distractingly entering on screen left. Press Command Z to undo that edit. Click the Clear Both Marks button beneath the source monitor, or press D on your keyboard to delete the endpoint, and this time set only an out point right before a body enters the frame. By selecting the out point, you ensure that the end of the shot will be free of distractions. I like the out point at 2064105 because the driver is waving his arms desperately, and I think that conveys the right emotion. Press O to mark the out, and then perform an overwrite edit. Now review the edit in the timeline. I think this looks better, but we'll let the director be the judge. When it comes time to show her the edit, I simply change which track I'm monitoring. To monitor V1, click below the monitoring icon on the V2 track to move it down to V1, then review the edit. Please. To monitor V2, click the gray square above the monitoring icon on V1.
The rule of track monitoring is a clip on a higher track will completely block any clips on lower tracks unless something is done to the top clip which causes it to blend with or reveal the material on the lower tracks such as changing the top clip's opacity, scale, or cropping parameters. We will cover these compositing techniques in a later lesson. With audio, it's a different story. Audio on higher tracks doesn't block or mute audio on lower tracks. It mixes with it. This is why it's so loud during our new shot. The new audio is playing at the same time as the old. To hear just the new audio, we have two options. In the same column as the video monitoring button are audio monitoring controls. We can click M for mute on the A1 and A2 tracks, and they become silent. Or we can unmute A1 and A2 and click S for solo for the A3 and A4 tracks. Soloing mutes all the other tracks. When you have a lot of audio tracks, it's much easier to solo what you want to hear than to click each of the other tracks one at a time to mute them. Soloing mutes them all in one step.